Inside Amazon Spheres, the Biodome Office in Seattle, Open Office. What are Amazon Spheres? How can you go to the spheres? Amazon's preparing to welcome staff into its fully completed, plants-filled spheres next week, five years after first proposing the construction of three glass domes on its downtown Seattle site, heralding another perk of working for the ever-growing internet behemoth. So welcome back to Top Viral. Today, in the next few minutes, I'll take you inside Amazon Spheres. So sit back and relax and enjoy the video because this one is going to be so exciting. Alexa, open the sphere, said Jeff Bezos, and Amazon's hybrid greenhouse and office space, the spheres, became operational. During the ceremonial opening, Amazon Vice President for Global Real Estate and Facilities, John Shatter, noted, We wanted a space for people to collaborate and invent. What is lacking from the modern office, we wondered. The missing element turned out to be a link to nature. The notion of meeting, working, or relaxing amid 40,000 plants from over 30 nations in a tropical climate in the heart of Seattle was created as a method to help Amazonians think differently, to break away from regular workstations, and to get up close to nature. Many of Amazon's high-rise Doppler and Day One buildings, which book in the spheres at Lenora Street between 6th and 7th Avenues in the city's Denny Triangle District, loom over the spheres. The makeover of this area of town, which stretches north to South Lake Union, is part of Amazon's endeavor to rethink how corporate campuses are created in urban environments. Since they got their official name, the glass biodomes, orbs, balls, or whatever else people have called them, have been an architectural curiosity in Seattle. In 2015, workers began building the spheres. A year later, in 2016, the steel frame was finished. But sorry, only Amazon employees can use the most interesting parts of the sphere's interiors. People who aren't Amazon employees will have to sign up for an official Amazon headquarters tour to see more than the three retail experiences at the street level. Even employees have to use a reservation system at first, already it's full through April so that the spheres don't get too crowded with the company's 40,000 employees in Seattle alone. Amazon's Vice President of Global Real Estate and Facilities, John Shetler, said, This is a great chance to teach, and we hope to be able to open these spheres to the public sometime for field trips and for educational purposes with different schools and universities. This is our office space, and none of the towers is open to the public. This is just a different place for our employees to work. The big difference between these landmarks and the spheres is that not just anyone can go inside the spheres. It's a secure Amazon workspace, but even Amazon employees have to book a time to get in ahead of time. The public can't go inside unless they're on a tour of Amazon HQ. Still, the building's impressive and should be seen if you have the chance. The inside of the conservatory is a mix of business and fun, just like the area itself is a mix of work and nature. From the inside, the spheres look taller than they do from the outside. A 65-foot high green wall lines a staircase that goes almost all the way to the top of the 90-foot tall middle dome. Each level has different kinds of seating, some of which wrap around a private cylinder in the middle that holds the restrooms for that level and limits access to greenery. Some of them are hidden in little courtyards. Around 40,000 plants call this place home. It took more than six years of planning, building, and planting to get the facility up and running, and the spheres weren't always meant to be round. The local architecture firm MBBJ made the first sketches, which show shapes ranging from rectangles to gothic arches. There was a more traditional bulbous shape that looked like a conservatory. But making a sphere isn't as easy as it might seem. Even though the spheres look a bit like a traditional geodesic dome, this building is much more complicated. The spheres are made from a repeating geometric module, just like a geodesic dome. The pentagonal frames used to build the spheres are called Catalans by MBBJ because they were inspired by the work of Belgian mathematician Eugene Charles Catalan, who was inspired by Archimedes. Magnussen Klimenichik Associates, a structural engineering firm, helped MBBJ run simulations and decide on the geometry. There aren't many of those shapes that you can use over and over again, said Dale Alberta, the project's lead designer for MBBJ. What we love about this is that you can then make a single part that fits together like a puzzle. Inside the glass walls, the metal structures look smoother, with more curves and straight lines. Alberta said, I wanted it to be less obvious than the building didn't look like a pentagon. We wanted it to look much more natural and hide the geometry so that it would be something you would find out about over time. It looks more like a vine than a steel structure. 
Outside the building's curved shape, the edges of the flat glass planes are more like those of a geodesic dome. One of the reasons people get this wrong is that we used flat planes of glass that are triangular in shape, said Savo. But we like the hard edge glass because it looked like crystals. Alberta also said that it costs less. Savo said that making a project that is good for both plants and people was the biggest challenge inside the building. Savo said we chose a type of ecosystem that is usually called a cloud forest. A cloud forest is a type of high altitude tropical forest where the temperatures are cooler on the sides of the mountains. This makes clouds, which gives the plants water. Savo said that the plants that live in the domes do well in an area that didn't need a lot of seasonal change and liked what people like during the day. The weather here is between 68 and 74 degrees. It's a little bit more humid than an office, Savo said of the 60 to 65 percent humidity level. Still, when people aren't around, the humidity is turned up even more. From 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., the humidity rises to between 80 and 85 percent, which is part of the plant's daily cycle. But during the day, it feels like you can work comfortably, said Savo. Of course, that's the point. You leave your desk and work in a park or garden. Alberta said that this lets people be in an environment that is completely different from the work environment where they can be more creative and think more clearly. It is neither a conservatory nor an office building in the strictest sense. It's the two of them together. Alberta said that the idea is much more than just something new. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. As the project went on, the team became more involved in the ecology community around the world. Alberta said that many of the plants were given to the garden because ecologists wanted them to grow in as many places as possible. Some of these plants are very rare, and some of them are even extinct in their natural habitat, he said. Alberta said that the team quickly realized that the building could be a key part of the conservation movement. We didn't know much about that when we started this project. And while the parts of the building that are shallower and more obvious were made for people, the parts that are more hidden were made for plants. Horticulturists can make changes to the plants in a room below the facility. This lets them control even the microclimates within the plants. Hidden devices keep track of the light and humidity levels. You can mix and match the color spectrum modules to get the right mix, Alberta said. So we were able to mix these modules to get great light for the plants and also make it look like the sun was shining. The third purpose of the lighting is to draw people's attention inside. When the light from the lit plant shines through the building's clear exterior, it makes the building's outside look green. It's a way for the public to enjoy the garden, said Savo. The goal of making it easy to see the area's unique plant life was met, for better or worse. It can't be avoided, like a giant tropical snow globe sitting on the edge of downtown. The building has become a good example of how Amazon has a firm grip on Seattle's new identity and is driving it forward. Erickson's name, which will also be on a restaurant and bar that will be open to the public. Understory, which is on 7th Avenue, will tell the public more about the story by showing photos and videos about how the spheres were made and what is going on inside of them now. So what do the spheres tell the Amazonians for whom they were made? And what do they say to people who don't work for the tech giant? This is why we hire you. Or here's another reason you should work for us. Shetler said, I think it says both. As you know, we put a lot of money into our campus in the city, and we could have gone to the suburbs, taken some farmland, cut down some trees, and felt like we were in a more natural setting. We made this amazing space by bringing nature into the city. So this was all about this video. I hope you like the information given in the video. If you have anything on your mind, feel free to comment below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this. And also hit the bell icon to get the notification of the latest updates on the channel. And thanks for watching!